In section 8.5, we look at how to convert our dynamical equation for central force motion into an equation for the orbit of the two interacting particles. Okay, so recall that our dynamical equation, uh, r double dot times mu, is equal to the force, uh, the central force interac of interaction between the two particles, and then this term, which has to do with conservation of angular momentum. <clears throat> the force uh, function is, of course, the negative r derivative of our potential energy function u. Uh, and we can define a new variable, little u, uh, as being 1 over r. And so that means that r is just going to be 1 over u. And that, this definition actually turns out to be key to solving this dynamical equation. Remember that the angular momentum for our system, L, is defined in this way. And so L is proportional to uh, phi dot. Since angular momentum is a conserved quantity, uh, we can solve this equation for uh, phi dot, or d phi by dt. That's just L over mu r squared. What this equation is telling us is that because L is conserved, <coughs> that we can either track the evolution of a variable for our system in time, which means we're interested in its time derivative, or we can convert this time derivative into a derivative in terms of phi, in which case we're going to track the phi evolution of that variable. So that means that there's a one-to-one -one relationship between the time uh, at which we consider the system after some evolution and the angle phi through which the system has uh, revolved. And we'll see what exactly that means in a second. Okay, so this conservation of angular momentum, again, means that uh, d phi by dt is L over mu r squared. That means we can recast a time derivative. Anywhere where we see a time derivative, we can actually replace that uh, with this expression right here. So we can take d phi by dt and multiply it through by a derivative with respect to phi. So that means whenever we have a time derivative, we can just replace it with this expression over here. And then that means that the time derivative can be rewritten as L over mu r squared, remember d phi dt, uh, times d by d phi. Okay, so let's go back to our dynamical equation and replace all our time derivatives with phi derivatives. And what we'll find is we'll get a nice relationship in terms of r and phi that we can actually solve for exactly. Okay, so now we're going to consider first the first time derivative of r. Remember, we have two time derivatives to take care of, but let's look at the first one. That's, of course, dr by dt, and we just said that uh, we could replace all our time derivatives uh, with uh, a d phi expression, so we have this right here. So dr by dt becomes this expression there. Now, remember, we suggested this substitution of 1 equal, or excuse me, r equal 1 over, over u, and now we'll see why that's a useful substitution to make. So uh, we'll replace, everywhere we see an r, we'll replace it with 1 over u, and so r dot is going to be l u squared, because there's an r squared here at the bottom, right, over mu, times d by d phi acting on 1 over u. Well, 1 over u, the, the, sorry, excuse me, the phi derivative of 1 over u, that's u to the minus 2 times d u by d phi. And so we can see that these two u's are going to cancel out. And that actually simplifies our equations quite a lot. Okay. So next, we need to think about the second time derivative of r, because remember, our dynamical equation relates the second time derivative of r. Okay, so r double dot is, of course, the time derivative of r dot. <clears throat> and recall, we can replace our time derivative uh, with an expression that looks like this, where now I've replaced that r squared that used to be in the bottom, replaced it with that u squared on the top. There's a d by d phi. And so we're taking... Uh, the phi derivative of what we just got for r dot, which is minus L over mu du by d phi. And so this tells me that r double dot is going to be minus L squared over mu squared u squared times the second phi derivative of u. Okay, now let's go back to our main dynamical equation, plug this in and see how things work out. Okay, so coming back to our main uh, dynamical equation, mu r double dot is equal to all this stuff over here. We're going to replace uh, r double dot with the expressions we have in terms of u and the phi derivatives. And we're going to replace r's over here. We're going to replace all of those with u's. And so the left-hand side of the equation, of course, becomes this business right here. And then the right-hand side, uh, f of r becomes f of 1 over u. And then the second term, because we have an r cubed on the bottom, we get a u cubed on the top. We'll divide through by all of this right here on the left-hand side. And the final equation we get for the orbit is the second derivative of u with respect to phi. It's going to be equal to minus u minus 
mu over L squared over U squared, the little, uh, little u, times the force equation. Now, we can't solve this in general. We need to know uh, what our force equation actually is in order to solve for u as a function of phi, uh, and then convert that back into uh, r as a function of phi. But we'll see that uh, in, in many of the kind of cases that we, do, uh, we encounter for this class, we have a nice clean expression for f, and so um, we'll actually get a really simple uh, equation relating r to phi, which will end up being uh, the orbit.